In this video, we're going to take a look at and apply four different types of transformations. The first one we're going to look at is a translation, also known as a slide. The next one we're going to look at is a reflection. We're going to reflect over the x-axis and over the y-axis. Then we're going to have a stretch, stretching both away from the x-axis and the y-axis. And finally, a compression, where we push it towards the x-axis and toward the y-axis. So let's start with a translation. Let's say we want to translate the, this figure, which I have graphed here on my coordinate plane, um, and my original points are down here below it. I want to translate that three units up. Three units up. Okay, well, which of my coordinates, x or y, deals with moving up and down? That would be the y coordinate. So what that means is I need to add 3 to each of my y coordinates, which I have down here. So my new y coordinates are going to be negative 5, 4, negative 5, 7, and negative 1, 4. Okay, so I can go ahead and graph those. Negative 5, 4 puts me right up here. That's my first point. Then negative 5, 7 puts me right up here. And my final point, negative 1, 4 puts me right there. If I connect those dots, I find that my figure is now... something like that okay so that's a vertical translation of three units up if we were going down we would subtract so if we're going up we're gonna add if we're going down we're gonna subtract now let's look at a horizontal translation of let's say four units to the right so I'm going four units to the right which of my or of my coordinates deals with moving left and right well, that would be the x. So I'm going to add 4 to each of my coordinates. And I'm going to switch colors here so we can keep track of everything we're doing. So I'm going to add 4 to each of my x coordinates. Get the right tool here. So negative 5 plus 4 is going to give me negative 1, 1. My y coordinate stays the same. Then I'm going to add 4 to negative 5, 4, which also gives me negative 1, 4. And then finally, add 4 to my negative 1, 1, which is going to give me 3, 1. Okay, so I can graph those points. And if I do so, negative 1, 1 puts me right here. Negative uh, 1, 4 puts me right up here. And then 3, 1 would be right here. So I can connect the dots again and find that my figure has been moved three unit, four units, excuse me, to the right. Now, again, if we were moving to the left, we would subtract. If we're moving to the right, we're going to add. If we're moving to the left, we're going to subtract. So, now let's talk about reflections. If we want to reflect over the x-axis, what we need to do is change the sign of the y-coordinate. We change the sign of the opposite of the axis we're reflecting over. So I'm going to change the signs of the y-coordinates in my original from my original ordered pairs. So I'm reflecting over the x-axis. I'm going to change the y coordinates. So it's going to be negative 5, negative 1, and then negative 5, negative 4, and finally negative 1, negative 1. If I graph those points quickly, I would be at negative 5, negative 1, which puts me right there. Negative 5, negative 4 would put me right here. And then negative 1, negative 1. Oops, I goofed up on that last one. 
negative 1, negative 1, there it is, is right there. Connect the dots, and we find that our original triangle, which is the black one, of course, is reflected over the x-axis. Now, if we wanted to reflect over the y-axis, what we would do is simply change the coordinates, change the sign of the x-coordinates. We change the sign of the one that's opposite of what we're interested in. So, if we want to flip it over the y-axis, we're going to change the sign of the x-coordinates. So that means that the negative 5, 1 becomes positive 5, 1. Then negative 5, 4 becomes positive 5. Oops. Yeah, that's right. Positive 5, 4. And finally, negative 1, 1 becomes 1, 1. And I'm not going to graph those just in the interest of time and getting all kinds of stuff here. But if we would graph those, we would find that that triangle then reflects over the y-axis, which is what we're looking for. Also what we can do, another type of transformation, is called a stretch. If we're stretching away from the x-axis, we're going to multiply the y-coordinates. It's the opposite. So let's say we're going to stretch by 2. I'm going to stretch by 2. I'm going to multiply the y-coordinates on that. So I'm going to switch colors again here just to try and keep things straight. So if I'm stretching away from the x-axis, I'm going to multiply the y-coordinates by 2. So that would give me negative 5, 2, then negative 5, 8, and finally negative 1, 2. Okay, And what happens there, if we were to graph that, we would find that it's been stretched away from the x-axis. So let's just quickly graph that to see what it looks like. Negative 5, 2 puts us right up here. Then we have negative 5, 8. There's 2, 4, 6, 8. It's way up there. And then negative 1, 2 puts us right here. So it kind of distorts it a little bit. We see that we go all the way here and then all the way up here and then over like that. So notice how it took our original figure and it stretched it away from the x-axis. Also we can look at stretching away from the y-axis and if we do that let's do the same thing let's stretch it by a factor of 2 we're going to multiply the opposite coordinates. So we're going to multiply the x coordinates by 2 this time. So that would give us, again, I'm just going to flip colors here. Away from that y axis, we're going to multiply the x coordinates. So negative 5, 1 becomes negative 10. Oops. Negative 10, 1. Negative 5, 4 becomes negative 10, 4. And finally, negative 1, 1 becomes negative 2, 1. And if we were to graph that, we would find that it's stretched away from the y-axis. Another thing that we can do is compress the figure that we're given. So in this case, a compression is basically the same thing as a stretch, except you're multiplying by a number that's between... 0 and 1, not including 0 and 1. Typically some sort of fraction like 1 half or 1 third. So if we want to stretch toward the x-axis, again it's the opposite, so we're going to be dealing with the y-coordinates. Let's say that we want to stretch or compress, excuse me, compress toward the y-axis by a factor of 1 half. So we're going to multiply the y-coordinates by 1 half. So it becomes negative 5 1 half, and then we get negative 5, 2, and finally negative 1, and 1 times 1 half would be 1 half. What would happen there if we'd graph that is it would be squished down toward the x axis. And again, toward the y axis, we're going to multiply the x coordinates. 
So let's say we're going to compress one half toward the y axis. We'd multiply each of those. So that would be negative 2.5, 1. And then we'd have negative 2.5 again, 1, or 4, excuse me. And finally, um, half of that would be negative 1 half and 1. Okay, so four types of transformations that we looked at here. A translation, which is kind of like a, it's a slide, also known as. If you're going vertically, we change the Y coordinate by adding or subtracting, depending on if we're going up or down. If we're going horizontally, we're going to change the X coordinate, and then we add or subtract depending on if we're going left or right. A reflection over the X axis, we change the sign of the Y coordinate. Over the Y axis, we change the sign of the X coordinate. It's always the opposite. Same thing is the case with stretches and compressions. If we're going away from the X axis, we're going to multiply by the Y coordinate. If we're going away from the Y axis, we're going to multiply by the X coordinate. And the difference between a stretch and a compression is that a stretch, we're multiplying by a number that's larger than 1 to make it bigger, and a compression, we're multiplying by a number that's less than 1 but greater than 0 in order to make it smaller. Hope that was helpful. Good luck.